Hi, this is Debbie with Mortgage Mom Radio, and you guys are tuning in to Workshop 104. What is 104 going to be about? Well, we're going to talk all about closing costs, everything that you need to know. You can't buy a home without closing costs or at least asking the seller to pay them, so make sure that you guys are watching. The first thing that I want you to do, though, is I want you guys to download my phone app. This is one of the most important ways for you guys to get in touch with me, run monthly payments to know what you can afford, run your affordability calculator. You can do so much with this phone app that it is very, very important. So text the word mom to 474747. All you're going to do is click on the link that you get and you're going to go ahead and save that to your home screen. It's really very simple. But the, these valuable tools at the tip of your fingers is very, very important when you guys are out thinking about buying a home. You're scrolling through Redfin, you're looking at Realtor.com, and you want to know if you can afford that house that you're viewing. Well, hey, you know what? Flip from the Redfin app over to the Mortgage Mom Radio app and you can figure that out. Not only that, but you can text the word mom to 474747 and you can respond to me then and you can ask me your questions. I'm going to take those questions and I'm going to put them into the live feed during the premiere. So make sure that you're here and you guys are going through all of this. Put those questions in that comment and I'm going to start answering those for you right now. So here we go. We're going to move on. We're going to get right into closing costs. It's a really important piece of the entire home buying process. So what are closing costs? Closing costs are fees that are required in a purchase transaction and a refinance tra transaction. You need to have things like title insurance. You need to set up your new homeowner's insurance. You're gonna have an escrow company that's gonna do all of the work and all of the paperwork and they're gonna be your third party, your neutral third party that is going to make sure that they take instructions from you, the seller, the real estate agents, and the lender. So you really want them. Think of them as your attorney for your real estate transaction. So you're gonna have fees coming from everywhere and it's m so important to understand what the fees are, where they're coming from, who they're coming from, et cetera. One thing I want you guys to take note on the screen right now is that it tells you that the biggest mistake that you can make is to start looking for a home and not understand closing costs. Closing costs on average are about 2% of your sales price. So if you thought you could get into that home 3% down, you wrote an offer and you expected to come in with your 3% down, well, you really need about 5%. So it's a very key piece of the entire process that we don't want you guys to get confused by. We want you to understand it. So we're just gonna jump right in and we're gonna look at what an estimate looks like. So I have a piece of an estimate up on the screen for you. I wanted to make it big enough that you could all actually see what those charges are and what they say next to them and what the dollar amounts are. This estimate that I did was for a sales price of 500,000. Why did I pick 500,000? Well, it's kind of an average number throughout LA County, Orange County, Riverside, San Bernardino. You're gonna see those numbers very, very often. This estimate that I did is I used 10% down. A lot of people will have less per money down and others are gonna have more money down. So I wanted to go with something that was gonna be middle of the road. If you wanna see what your closing cost would look like for your particular transaction, all you have to do is reach out to me. Text the word mom to 474747 and send me a message. If you have that phone app I told you to download, you can actually email me, you can call me, you can email Larry if you wanna work with a guy, you can email Heidi, you can email whoever it is that you feel comfortable with, but you can send us a message. You can also call me from that phone app. So if there's something in particular that you wanna know or that you wanna see for you personally, I'm more than happy to put that together for you. But we're gonna do just one estimate today because it does get overwhelming to think that we're gonna go through all of the different loan programs and all of the different fees that you might see. But this is a really good indication of what you're gonna see as far as closing costs are concerned. The price that you buy the home for will actually escalate the amount of closing costs because your closing costs are gonna be based on your sales price. Your insurance will be based on your price, what you need to insure in your home. The more expensive home, it's gonna cost you more in your, in your insurance annually. Your property taxes are gonna be more on the higher the price. So just remember that this is just an estimate and it's to give you guys something to look at to understand a little bit better. So the first place that I want you guys to look is at the very, very top and it says, uh, 800, we're gonna be in the 800 section right now. And in the 800 section, you'll see items payable in connection with the loan. And the first thing you see is a $650 charge. That $650 charge is for the processing fee. That is what the lender, the mortgage company that you go through is going to charge you for the processing of your loan. There's processors that work on the file. They have to put all of your paperwork together, 
get it over to the underwriter, and that is a cost. Every mortgage company is going to have a little bit different in fees, but all of the 800 fees are actually coming directly from your mortgage company. These are the only fees that your mortgage company has any control over. They can't control what the escrow costs are. They cannot control what titles costs are. They can't control how much your property taxes are. You're responsible to find your homeowner's insurance policy. So this 800 section is coming from your lender. This is what you are paying to get your loan done. You'll see the second one says an underwriting fee. So an underwriting fee is exactly what it sounds like. It's what we're charging in order to cover the cost of the salaries for the underwriters that work on the files and work on the loans. So per loan, it costs about $650 based on the amount of times that an underwriter reviews the file and touches the file. So that is gonna be an average number. Lender fees do not typically change by your sales price or your loan amount. So if you buy something for $200,000, $150,000, or a million dollars, these numbers aren't going to change. No matter how small or how big that your loan is, the processor does just as much work. The underwriter does just as much work. So you're gonna see that these fees are gonna be flat fees that don't change. The last one in that 800 section is the funding fee. And that is the cost for our closers. Our closers are the ones that are responsible to work directly with your escrow company, balance all of the figures, wire the money out, balance the actual file itself and make sure that all of those numbers and that that funding goes right so that you can record on your home and become a homeowner. So these are the actual lender costs. If you move down below that in 803, you're gonna actually see that the um, adjusted origination charges is 1595. That is what those fees in the box above, the 650, 650 and 295 total. So that is what that number is. That is not an additional charge. In the 804 section, that is the cost of the appraisal. Every mortgage company has a little bit different cost and it's based on the appraisal management company that they use to assign their appraisers. Our fee here for a conventional loan is $445 for the appraisal. So that is why I put that there for you. That is a third party fee. We have to use an, uh, we have to use a company you know, neutral third party to order that appraisal so that we can make sure that we're getting a true value for the home and make sure that what we are lending you, the property is worth. So now we're gonna move over to 1100 on the right hand side of your screen. And you'll see their title charges. All of these fees that are listed out for you here are all of the costs between the title company and you'll see settlement fee in the 1102, which is the escrow company. This is my very best guess, and this is not a flat number. This is my best guess of what I've seen over the last 20 years in this industry of what I typically see a cost for a $500,000 sales price run you. So you'll see at the top, there's a title endorsement fee of $100. There's a messenger courier fee of $80. There's a sub escrow fee of $125. These are all title fees. What's a sub escrow fee? Well, that means that the title company that you're getting your title insurance from, title insurance actually insures the lender. If you stop making payments, we're going to get paid back. Um, but the title insurance company, if they are not also the escrow company, one in the same. So First American Title can't does have a First American escrow department. If you go through an all-in-one, you will not see that sub-escrow fee. But in the majority of cases, we see that the escrow company is an independent third party and the title company is a separate title company. So there's usually that sub-escrow fee. Well, what's the courier fee for? Well, we need somebody to run your paperwork from the escrow company where you signed and you got notarized to the county to actually record all of your paperwork so that you become the owner of the home. So that's what a courier fee could be. A courier fee could also just be something that has to happen in the middle of a transaction. So this is my estimate of what I see on average per file. All right, so then we've got a recording fee. So what's a recording fee? Well, that's gonna be what the title company is gonna charge to get that recorded that paperwork recorded to make you the homeowner. So now we get into the settlement agent. Settlement agent is the escrow company. You'll see in 1102 and below, these are just all of my estimates of what I typically see an escrow company charge on a sales price of 500,000. This is gonna change. If you have a $200,000 sale, they base it on the sales price. So this will go down. If you have a million dollar, $2 million sale, this is gonna go up significantly. One good way to actually look at it is it's typically $2 per thousand plus a $300 flat fee. 
that's just kind of an average. Plus, they've got a bunch of other fees like a doc processing fee, their messenger fees, their notary fee. Well, you do need to get your paperwork notarized. That's very important. If it's not notarized, we can't record it, and it's not legally it's not legal and binding. So there is going to be a notary fee as well. So again, this is just my estimate to you to see what I expect you to pay in title and escrow costs for your loan. You also have government recording fees. So the county's going to charge you money to record your note and your deed of trust for you to be the owner on title. And those are usually approximately $150 here in the state of California. Every state is a little bit different. If you're in Illinois, it's actually an attorney state. There is no escrow company. The attorney and the title company work together. So depending on the state that you're in, you'll want to reach out to me and say, what does my estimate look like? I'm talking to California because the majority of my listeners are in California with my radio show being on Go Country. And, you know, that's just where everything is. This is where I'm located. So this is where the majority of my clients come from. But I work in very many states. And if you're looking for an estimate for your state, all you have to do is reach out. How do you reach out? Exactly what I told you guys before. Text the word mom to 474747 and then send me a message or give me a call. If you've got the phone app, great. If you don't, it's okay. 844-935-3634 or 844-WE-LEND-4-U and that is the number four. You guys can also email me at Debbie, D-E-B-B-I-E at MortgageMomRadio.com. Keep those, keep those questions coming into the feed right now, and I'm going to keep answering them for you. If you're too embarrassed to ask a question because people can see your name in that live feed, go ahead and text me that question, and I will transfer it over, and I will answer it for you. So now we're going to move on. This is the bottom of that first page. And the reason I had to cut it up is, again, I want it to be big enough that you can actually see what I'm showing you. So you'll see at the very bottom, total estimated closing costs are $54.29, and that is for that sales price of $500,000. But hey, wait we're not done. We're not done. <laughs> um, these are the actual closing costs. There are closing costs that are called recurring closing costs. And those are things that as a homeowner, you will have recur. Things like property taxes, things like homeowner's insurance. We need to set up an impound or an escrow account to make sure that when those bills are due, that we can pay those for you. So those are going to be a completely separate page which we're going to get to next that will be added to the total of all of the 800 and 1100 boxes that you saw that are totaling $5,429. Again, if you guys have any questions whatsoever, start shooting them at me right now and I'll answer those for you. You guys can call me directly offline. You can text those questions to me right now. I am here to help you guys in any way that I can. So the next thing that we've got is in the first box, you'll see 900. Well, the 900 is the, the interest that you are going to pay. Depending on the day of the month that you close your loan, you will pay interest from that day till the end of the month. I've used a number of 15 in my estimate. The reason I did that is middle of the road. Not everybody's going to close their loan on the first day of the month and have to pay 30 days of interest, and not everybody's going to close on the last day of the month and have no interest to pay. So I went ahead and I went with 15 to give you guys a good understanding. So based on the interest rate, the loan amount, we're going to determine what is your per diem interest, and we're going to take that by 15 days, and that is what you see at the $937.50 on your screen. Next, you're going to also see that we are collecting for homeowners insurance. This is my best guess what it's going to cost you to buy your first one year policy or 12 months in advance. You have to have 12 months done in advance at the time of closing. So on a $500,000 sales price on average, I see the policies around $1,000 for your homeowners insurance. This is up to you to look for. This is not up to me. You get to determine what your policy is going to cost you. Now, if you want an insurance agent, you want me to refer you, more than happy to do that. You want me to help you get a great estimate, more than happy to do that. But it truly is up to you. You get to pick your insurance company that is going to insure you for your loan and for your home. If something burns down, a pipe breaks, there's a flood, you need to have homeowner's insurance. So it's very important, especially if somebody's just on your property and they slip and fall. What if you have a pool in the backyard? You need to make sure that you're insured. So we're gonna cut, we're gonna collect that one year up front, but this is a recurring charge. Next year, you're gonna have that same amount due again and again and again, year after year. Um, we're also going to collect for property taxes. Now, this is not for your impound or your escrow account, and we'll talk about that next. But let's just say, for example, that you're buying a home from the seller. 
property taxes in California are due twice a year. And you pay from January to June and from June to December. I think it's actually somewhere in there. Um, but you're paying for the first half and the second half of the year. Let's say that you close your loan in March and the seller's already paid the property tax bill because the property tax bills in California are due in advance, not behind. So if your seller's already paid the bill, but now you're gonna become the owner of the home during a time that they've paid for, you owe the seller back to cover the cost that they incurred. So I went ahead and I went with four months in this one, assuming that maybe you close in February or maybe you close in July or August. This is going to show you that you're going to be responsible to cover your portion of that time for that for that tax bill. Um, those numbers all come together, and you can see if we go down um, over to the right to the thousand. Let's go to the right. Let's go to the thousand next, and then we'll go down bot below into those other boxes. If you go over to the right, now this is where we're going to do reserves deposited with the lender. Well, what is this for? Well, let's say that we close your loan in March. Let's say you close March fifteenth. It's a great example. Your first monthly mortgage payment will not be due until May 1st. And I had to think about that one for a second. Till May 1st. On May 1st is when you make your first payment, but you closed in March. So we need to collect enough from you so that every single month that you make a payment, we can separate the payment that you make. So you make one total payment and then the lender is going to separate. Principal and interest will go where it needs to go. Taxes and insurance will go into a separate account for you called an escrow account or an impound account. And we need to make sure that we have enough there that with every monthly payment that you make, the next tax bill that comes to us or the next insurance bill that comes to us a year after you, you've purchased, we have enough money collected from you in a savings account to pay those bills. So I've put two months in there for an impound account for taxes and two months for your insurance and that is because you will close in March and not make a payment till May so you've got two months that we need to make sure that we're collecting for so that's where that total is coming from so your 900 section and your thousand section is coming to another additional total of fifty seven hundred dollars so between your fifty seven seventy three and your fifty four twenty nine from the previous page now you're looking at total closing costs of just over eleven thousand dollars so that is why you it is so important that you guys understand these closing costs how much are they who's charging them where are they coming from and why you need to pay them so now let's go ahead and go down to the total estimated monthly payment this is great for you guys to look at so you'll see in this we've got principal and interest broken down again this is for a ten percent down $450,000 loan on a $500,000 sales price. You'll see that we have the hazard insurance at $85 a month. We have the property taxes at 520. I came up with 520 because a very average property tax rate that we see in California is about one and a quarter percent. Watch out for those new housing tracks because a lot of times you'll end up with an additional tax called Mellow Roos and that property tax could go up as high as 2%. 2.1, 2.2%, depending on the area that you're buying in. So make sure that you're double checking and you're asking your realtor, what are the property taxes on this home? Are there special assessments? Is there Mellow Roos? But this is based on a resale, older home in Los Angeles County, one and a quarter is a pretty good average estimate for you guys to count on. So then we go into, uh, you've got your uh, mortgage insurance because you didn't put your 20% down payment. And we just talked about all kinds of loan programs last week and all kinds of loan programs the week before. There are conventional loans with less than 20% down that don't have mortgage insurance. This is just to give you an idea. Again, I'm just showing you an, an average of what takes place. So depending on which loan program works best for you, whether you opt to have mortgage insurance or you don't, that mortgage insurance may not be there in that monthly payment. But you can see that I'm showing you a total monthly payment of 3122. That is just a breakdown for you to understand what that monthly payment might look like for you in this scenario. So if we go over to the right hand side, you're going to see that your uh, purchase price is 500,000. You're going to see that breakdown of the 5429, which was the closing costs that are non recurring, the actual transaction fees. You'll see that the recurring closing costs, the prepaids and ongoing costs as a homeowner are 5700, which gives you that grand total, like I said, of 11,002. Let's see, let me see. 11,202. I had to look for a minute. <laughs> I don't have my reading glasses on. Mom, mom's not, 
mom's not wearing them. Okay, so we've got um, loan amount of 450,000, which shows you that you would need 61,202 to close. So this is just a really great estimate. Again, if you guys want me to take you through an estimate that is specific to you, I'm more than happy to do that. You might be looking at down payment assistance. You might be looking at FHA with three and a half percent down. You might be in a conventional with 5% down. You might be a jumbo with 25% down. It doesn't matter what it is that you're looking to do. Every estimate is going to be special to you based on your loan program, the loan type, what you're going to have included in the monthly payment. Some clients with conventional loans and jumbo loans that have large down payments choose not to include their property taxes and their homeowner's insurance in the monthly payment. So this estimate would be less because we're not going to collect all of those things. So again, for your specific scenario, just call me. Call 844-935-3634. That's 844-WE-LEND-4-U and that is a number four. Or text me, text the word mom to 474747 or call me or email me or whatever you guys want to do. You get a hold of me somehow. Send me messages, send me notes. Send it through YouTube, I don't care. You can find me on Facebook, Instagram, wherever you guys wanna do it from. So let's go on to our next slide. Um, so the next slide I wanna talk about is the apply now. You guys are in workshop 104 and um, you've learned a lot and you may not wanna wait for me to finish this series that could take us another couple of months. We've got a lot of topics to cover, but you're ready to get started. You have an understanding of what's going on. You're about ready to dip your toe in the waters. You wanna know what you might qualify for. Maybe you wanna do a little bit of credit repair and hey, don't miss next week because next week we're talking about credit. Um, but maybe you wanna do those things, but you need to have an understanding of what you can do. What might your file look like? Okay, well now's the time. Go to my website, go to mortgagemomradio.com and click on the apply now button. It's gonna take you 10 to 15 minutes to fill that application out. It's extremely easy. Then I'm gonna actually send you a secured link to upload your documents to. W-2s, pay stubs, if you're self-employed, tax returns, depending on your scenario, I'll ask you for what I need. I will not pull your credit report until you and I have talked. We've talked about your scenario and your situation. And, know, and I know exactly what it is that you're needing in our consultation. So we're gonna consult first and then I'm gonna move forward. I won't pull the credit report until I have your permission. But this is a great way for you to get me to build you out a closing cost estimate. This is a great way for you to understand what programs are available to you. What might that monthly payment look like for you? So I can't encourage you enough, if you're just getting started, to plan ahead, to have that path of assistance, to know what that roadmap is and what that plan needs to be for you to become a homeowner, this is the first step. So don't miss it. Don't wait. Don't wait till you found the home of your dreams and then decide to apply. Apply now. Get it done because when you walk into that home and you fall in love, you need to be ready, prepared for what you need, know what those closing costs are going to be, how much cash do you need to close, and have that pre-approval letter in your hand. So last but not least, how do you guys contact us? Well, I've given it to you a couple of times in this show, but pause this page right now. Check it out. Real easy. Text me. Go to my Facebook page. Send me a message. I'm totally fine with that. Everywhere you want to find me is Mortgage Mom Radio. Don't forget the radio. You guys can call us. And hey, if you're enjoying this, please give me a thumbs up here. Subscribe to my channel for my future workshops. And give me a Yelp review. I would love it. I'm working so hard for you guys. And, you know, other than the satisfaction of knowing that I'm educating people, I don't get anything else. So please. <laughs> Give me a Yelp review. I would love that. All right, finally, I've got some disclosures here on the screen. Wanna make sure that you guys know I am licensed by the Department of Business Oversight. My NMLS ID number is 237926. And you know, it, you've got everything that you need right here on the screen. So just in case you wanna know a little bit more. But hey, again, once again, please, if you guys haven't watched 101, 102, or 103, and you're just tuning in for the first time, go back. You guys have so much more to learn. Like I said, we covered words that you need to know, acronyms about lending, real estate. We call them buzzwords. We've covered FHA, VA, conventional, USDA, bank statements, every loan program under the sun we've covered. Well, not every loan program, but a lot of them. Um, but we've covered a lot of loan programs. You've got a lot of information in the 101, 102, and 103. So go back and watch those. And hey, subscribe to the channel. Give me a thumbs up. I look forward to hearing you from you guys personally. And I'm going to stay right here during this premiere until I've answered every single question that you guys have asked. So I won't go anywhere until it's over. And I look forward to seeing you guys next week for closing or for credit repair.